In this video we'll study about general anesthesia. First we get to know what is general anesthesia. General anesthesia is a medical state induced intentionally in a patient to achieve a total loss of consciousness and sensation during a surgical procedure or medical intervention. It is a controlled and reversible condition that renders the patient unconscious and unresponsive to pain and external stimuli, allowing for invasive procedures to be performed without causing discomfort or distress. General anesthesia typically involves the administration of various drugs, including anesthetic agents, muscle relaxants, and sometimes analgesics, to achieve a state of deep unconsciousness. An anesthesiologist or nurse anesthetist closely monitors the patient's vital signs, such as heart rate, blood pressure, and oxygen levels, throughout the procedure to ensure their safety and adjust the anesthesia as needed. General anesthesia is commonly used for complex surgeries, major medical procedures, and in situations where it is essential for the patient to be completely unaware and immobile. The anesthesia team carefully tailors the anesthesia plan to the patient's medical condition, age, and the specific requirements of the surgery to minimize risks and ensure a safe and comfortable experience. Then we study about importance of general anesthesia in medical procedures. General anesthesia plays a crucial role in various medical procedures for several important reasons. 1. Pain management. General anesthesia induces a state of unconsciousness, which means the patient does not perceive pain during the procedure. This is essential for surgeries and interventions that would otherwise be excruciatingly painful without anesthesia. 2. Immobility. General anesthesia causes temporary paralysis of voluntary muscles, including those involved in reflexive movements. This immobility ensures that the patient remains still during the procedure, reducing the risk of accidental injuries to both the patient and the surgical team. 3. Surgical precision. Surgeons often need a calm and motionless surgical field to perform delicate and precise procedures. General anesthesia allows them to work without interruption or interference from patient movement. 4. Patient comfort. General anesthesia ensures that patients are not aware of what is happening during the procedure. This lack of awareness contributes to their psychological comfort and reduces anxiety associated with surgery. 5. Control over physiological responses. Anesthesia providers can closely monitor and control various physiological parameters such as heart rate, blood pressure, and oxygen levels, ensuring that they remain within safe ranges throughout the procedure. 6. Extended duration of procedures. Some complex surgeries or medical interventions can be lengthy, lasting several hours. General anesthesia allows patients to remain unconscious and pain-free for the duration of the procedure. 7. Pediatric and specialized procedures. General anesthesia is often necessary for pediatric surgeries, as children may not cooperate or understand the need to stay still and calm during a procedure. It is also used in specialized procedures such as cardiac surgery, neurosurgery, and organ transplantation, where precision and control are critical. 8. Patient compliance. Certain diagnostic and therapeutic procedures, such as endoscopy or bronchoscopy, require patients to be still and cooperative. General anesthesia may be employed in such cases to ensure patient compliance and comfort. 9. Prevention of trauma. For emergency procedures or situations where a patient's life is at risk, general anesthesia can be administered to immobilize the patient quickly and prevent further injury. 10. Reducing trauma-induced stress. Procedures that are invasive, painful, or traumatic can trigger a stress response in the body, potentially leading to adverse outcomes. General anesthesia helps mitigate this response by keeping the patient unconscious and relaxed. While general anesthesia is a powerful tool in modern medicine, it also carries inherent risks, and its use is carefully evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. Anesthesia providers are highly trained professionals who tailor the anesthetic plan to the patient's specific needs, ensuring both safety and comfort during medical procedures. Historical Perspective Brief Overview of the History of Anesthesia
The history of general anesthesia is a fascinating journey that has transformed the field of medicine and surgery by allowing patients to undergo complex and often painful procedures without experiencing pain or consciousness. Early use of herbal anesthetics, ancient times. Ancient civilizations, such as the Egyptians and Greeks, used various herbal concoctions, including opium and mandrake, to induce a state of unconsciousness during medical procedures and surgery. During the late 18th century and early 19th century, significant developments in the history of anesthesia took place, with the discovery and exploration of substances like ether and nitrous oxide. In the late 18th century, diethyl ether, commonly known as ether, was discovered and experimented with as a potential anesthetic agent. In the early 19th century, nitrous oxide, laughing gas, gained popularity as a recreational drug, and it was later recognized for its anesthetic properties. In 1846, a historic milestone in the history of anesthesia occurred with the first public demonstration of ether anesthesia, marking a pivotal moment in medical advancement and the relief of surgical pain. On October, 1846, in Boston, Massachusetts, dentist William T. G. Morton performed the first public demonstration of ether anesthesia during surgery at Massachusetts General Hospital. This event marked a significant milestone in the history of anesthesia. In the mid-19th century, the introduction of chloroform marked another pivotal moment in the history of anesthesia, offering a safer and more effective alternative to ether and nitrous oxide, further advancing the practice of painless surgery. On October, 1846, in Boston, Massachusetts, dentist William T. G. Morton performed the first public demonstration of ether anesthesia during surgery at Massachusetts General Hospital. This event marked a significant milestone in the history of anesthesia. The late 19th century and early 20th century witnessed remarkable progress in the development of inhalation anesthetics ushering in a new era of safer and more effective medical procedures that alleviated patients' suffering during surgery. The development of specialized inhalation devices and the discovery of newer inhalation anesthetics like halothane and isoflurane improved the safety and effectiveness of general anesthesia. In the late 19th century, the introduction and refinement of local anesthetics represented a monumental breakthrough in the history of medicine. Local anesthetics, such as cocaine, were developed, allowing for the numbing of specific areas of the body without rendering the patient unconscious. In the 20th century, remarkable advancements in monitoring and safety within the field of anesthesia significantly improved patient care, ushering in a new era of surgical procedures with enhanced precision and reduced risks. The 20th century saw significant advancements in anesthesia technology, including the development of monitoring equipment and techniques to ensure patient safety during surgery. In the late 20th century and continuing into the present day, modern anesthesia has seen remarkable advancements in techniques, equipment, and pharmacology, ensuring safer and more precise administration of anesthesia for a wide range of medical procedures. Today, general anesthesia is administered by highly trained anesthesiologists or nurse anesthetists. Anesthesia drugs and techniques have become highly refined and tailored to individual patient needs. Research and ongoing advancements. Research into anesthesia continues, with ongoing efforts to develop safer and more effective anesthetic agents and delivery methods. General anesthesia role in rendering a patient unconscious. General anesthesia plays a crucial role in rendering a patient unconscious during surgery or medical procedures. Its primary purpose is to induce a state of complete unconsciousness allowing patients to undergo invasive or painful procedures without experiencing pain or being aware of what is happening. Here are the key aspects of how general anesthesia accomplishes this. 1. Loss of consciousness. General anesthesia induces a profound loss of consciousness. Patients under general anesthesia are completely unaware of their surroundings, the surgical procedure, and any sensations associated with it. 2. Amnesia. One of the essential components of general anesthesia is the induction of amnesia. Patients do not remember anything that occurs while they are under anesthesia. This is important to prevent traumatic or distressing memories of the procedure. 3. Analgesia, pain relief. General anesthesia provides effective pain relief. 
It blocks the transmission of pain signals from the surgical site to the brain, ensuring that patients do not experience pain during the procedure. 4. Muscle Relaxation General anesthesia typically includes muscle relaxants that induce temporary paralysis. This is essential for surgeries that require immobility of specific muscle groups or for procedures that involve mechanical ventilation. 5. Control of physiological functions. Anesthesia also controls various physiological functions to maintain stability during surgery. This includes regulating heart rate, blood pressure, and breathing to ensure the patient's safety and well-being. 6. Depth of anesthesia monitoring. Anesthesiologists closely monitor the depth of anesthesia throughout the procedure using various monitoring devices and clinical assessments. This helps ensure that the patient remains at an appropriate level of unconsciousness and anesthesia depth. 7. Reversibility. One of the advantages of general anesthesia is its reversibility. After the procedure is complete, the anesthesiologist can gradually reduce the administration of anesthetic agents, allowing the patient to regain consciousness in a controlled manner. Key Phases of General Anesthesia General anesthesia consists of three key phases. Those three phases are induction, maintenance, and emergence. Each phase serves a distinct purpose in the administration and management of anesthesia during surgery or medical procedures. First key phase of general anesthesia is induction. The induction phase initiates the process of rendering the patient unconscious and ready for surgery or the medical procedure. Actions of induction phase. Intravenous, 4, or inhaled anesthetic agents are administered to induce unconsciousness quickly. Common four agents include propofol, etomidate, or barbiturates. Inhaled agents such as sevoflurane or desflurane are also used. The patient may receive premedication to alleviate anxiety and reduce the risk of side effects. Airway management begins, which may involve intubation, inserting a breathing tube, or using a supraglottic airway device to ensure proper ventilation during the procedure. Monitoring devices including heart rate, blood pressure, oxygen saturation, and end-tidal carbon dioxide, are applied to continuously assess the patient's vital signs. Second key phase of general anesthesia is maintenance. The maintenance phase sustains the state of anesthesia throughout the surgical or medical procedure. Actions of maintenance phase Anesthesia providers continue to administer anesthetic agents to keep the patient unconscious, pain-free, and amnesic. The depth of anesthesia is closely monitored and adjusted as needed to maintain the desired level of unconsciousness. Ventilation and oxygenation are carefully controlled to ensure adequate oxygen supply and carbon dioxide removal. Patients' vital signs and physiological functions are continuously monitored and managed to ensure stability. Surgical or medical interventions take place during this phase. Final phase of general anesthesia is emergence. The emergence phase involves the gradual awakening of the patient from anesthesia as the procedure concludes. Actions of emergence phase. Administration of anesthetic agents is reduced or discontinued to allow the patient to regain consciousness slowly. The patient's airway is carefully managed, and if a breathing tube was inserted, it may be removed when the patient is awake enough to breathe independently. Monitoring of vital signs and physiological functions continues as the patient transitions from anesthesia to wakefulness. Pain management strategies are initiated to ensure the patient is comfortable during the post-operative or post-procedural recovery period. Once the patient is fully conscious and stable, they may be transferred to a post-anesthesia care unit, PACU, or recovery area for further monitoring and care. These three phases of general anesthesia are meticulously orchestrated by anesthesia providers, such as anesthesiologists or nurse anesthetists, to ensure the safety, comfort, and well-being of the patient throughout the surgical or medical experience. Effective communication and coordination among the surgical team, anesthesia team, and nursing staff are essential during all phases of anesthesia care. Indications of general anesthesia General anesthesia is a medical technique used to induce a reversible loss of consciousness and sensation throughout the entire body. 
It is employed in various medical situations where the patient needs to be completely unaware of pain and unconscious during a procedure. Here are some common medical situations and examples where general anesthesia is necessary. 1. Surgery. General anesthesia is frequently used for surgical procedures, both minor and major. This includes surgeries such as open heart surgery, brain surgery, orthopedic surgery, example, joint replacement, abdominal surgery, example, appendectomy, gallbladder removal, cosmetic surgery, example, facelift, liposuction. 2. Complex medical procedures. Some medical procedures are intricate and require the patient to remain still and pain free. Examples include Endoscopy, example, colonoscopy Cardiac catheterization Interventional radiology procedures, example, embolization Dental procedures, example, wisdom tooth extraction 3. Pediatric surgery Children may require general anesthesia for various surgeries or medical procedures due to their inability to cooperate or stay still during the procedure. 4. Emergency procedures, in certain emergency situations, such as severe trauma or life-threatening conditions, general anesthesia may be administered to perform critical procedures quickly and without pain. Examples include Emergency surgery following a car accident Immediate fracture reduction 5. Obstetrics, while most childbirths do not require general anesthesia, there are instances when it may be necessary, such as in the case of a cesarean section, C-section. 6. Electroconvulsive therapy, ECT ECT is a psychiatric treatment used for severe depression and other mental health conditions. It is administered under general anesthesia to prevent patients from experiencing pain or trauma during the procedure. 7. Diagnostic imaging, some diagnostic tests or imaging procedures may require general anesthesia if they are particularly uncomfortable or invasive. For instance, magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, in young children or claustrophobic individuals. Bronchoscopy with biopsy. 8. Organ transplantation. Organ transplant surgeries often require general anesthesia to ensure that the patient is completely immobile and pain-free during the procedure. 9. Dental surgery. Complex dental surgeries, such as multiple tooth extractions or jaw reconstruction, may necessitate general anesthesia, especially when local anesthesia isn't sufficient. 10. Neurosurgery. Procedures involving the brain or spinal cord often require general anesthesia due to their delicate nature and the need for precise control of the patient's physiology. It's important to note that while general anesthesia is a valuable tool in medical practice, it is not without risks. Patients undergoing general anesthesia are closely monitored by anesthesiologists and the healthcare team to ensure their safety throughout the procedure. The choice to use general anesthesia is made based on the patient's medical condition, the nature of the procedure, and potential alternatives. The anesthesia team. The anesthesia team is a critical component of the healthcare system, responsible for ensuring patient comfort and safety during surgical procedures. The team typically consists of several key members, each with specific roles and responsibilities. 1. Anesthesiologist. The anesthesiologist is a medical doctor who specializes in anesthesia and perioperative care. They are responsible for assessing the patient's medical history, current health status, and any potential risks associated with anesthesia. Anesthesiologists develop a personalized anesthesia plan for each patient, taking into account factors like the type of surgery, patient's age, and medical conditions. During the surgery, they administer and monitor the anesthesia, adjusting the dosage as needed to maintain the patient's vital signs and comfort. They are trained to manage any complications or emergencies that may arise during anesthesia. 2. Nurse Anesthetist, Certified Registered Nurse Anesthetist, CRNA. A CRNA is a registered nurse with advanced training in anesthesia. They work under the supervision of an anesthesiologist or independently in many settings. CRNAs perform many of the same tasks as anesthesiologists, including assessing patients, 
administering anesthesia, and monitoring vital signs. They play a crucial role in providing anesthesia services, especially in rural or underserved areas. 3. Anesthesia Technician or Technologist An anesthesia technician is responsible for preparing and maintaining anesthesia equipment and supplies. They ensure that all equipment is functioning correctly, calibrated, and ready for use. Anesthesia technicians assist the anesthesia team in positioning patients and may help with patient transport. They are essential for maintaining a sterile environment and troubleshooting technical issues during surgery. 4. Certified Anesthesia Nurse, CNA A certified anesthesia nurse is a registered nurse who specializes in anesthesia care. They assist the anesthesia team by preparing the patient for surgery, monitoring vital signs, and providing post-operative care. CNAs may also assist with administering medications and documenting patient information. They play a critical role in ensuring patient comfort and safety throughout the perioperative period. 5. Anesthesia Resident, if applicable. Anesthesia residents are doctors who are undergoing specialized training in anesthesia. They work closely with attending anesthesiologists to gain experience in various aspects of anesthesia care. Residents participate in patient assessment, anesthesia administration, and management of complications. This training period is an essential step towards becoming a board-certified anesthesiologist. 6. Operating Room, or Nurse While not part of the core anesthesia team, or nurses play a vital role in supporting the anesthesia team. They assist with patient positioning, provide surgical instruments, and ensure a sterile environment. Or nurses collaborate closely with the anesthesia team to ensure the smooth flow of the surgical procedure. In summary, the anesthesia team is a multidisciplinary group of professionals working together to provide safe and effective anesthesia care to patients undergoing surgery or other medical procedures. Their collective efforts are essential for maintaining patient comfort and safety throughout the perioperative process. How General Anesthesia Works General anesthesia is a medical procedure that induces a reversible state of unconsciousness, loss of sensation, and muscle relaxation in a patient, allowing them to undergo surgery or other medical interventions without feeling pain or being aware of their surroundings. The mechanisms behind general anesthesia are complex and not fully understood, but they primarily involve the modulation of neurotransmitters and receptors in the central nervous system, CNS. Here's a simplified explanation of how general anesthesia works. 1. Induction phase, the process begins with the administration of anesthetic agents, typically via inhalation, inhaled gases, or intravenous, for injection. These agents can be in the form of volatile gases like sevoflurane or intravenous drugs like propofol. 2. Altered consciousness. The anesthetic agents act on the CNS to induce unconsciousness. While the exact mechanisms are not completely elucidated, it is believed that these agents primarily affect the brain's neurotransmitter systems. GABA, gamma aminobutyric acid, is an inhibitory neurotransmitter that plays a crucial role in reducing neuronal activity in the brain. Anesthetics enhance the effects of GABA, leading to a state of reduced neuronal activity, which is essential for unconsciousness. 3. Analgesia, pain control anesthesia also provides analgesia, or pain control. It reduces the perception of pain by interfering with the transmission of pain signals along the nervous system. This is accomplished by blocking the transmission of pain signals from peripheral nerves to the spinal cord and brain. Opioid medications, often administered alongside general anesthesia, can also contribute to pain relief. 4. Muscle relaxation, general anesthesia induces muscle relaxation, which is crucial for ensuring that the patient remains immobile during surgery. This muscle relaxation is achieved through the modulation of neuromuscular junctions and receptors, preventing muscle contractions and movements. 5. Maintenance phase. During the maintenance phase of general anesthesia, the anesthetic agents are continually administered to maintain the desired depth of anesthesia throughout the surgical procedure. Anesthesia providers monitor the patient's vital signs and adjust the drug dosages accordingly. 
6. Emergence and Recovery To conclude the anesthesia, the administration of anesthetic agents is gradually reduced or discontinued. The patient gradually regains consciousness, and their body metabolizes and eliminates the anesthetic drugs. It's essential to manage this phase carefully to ensure a smooth and safe transition to wakefulness. Effects on the Central Nervous System General anesthesia has profound effects on the central nervous system. 1. Unconsciousness Anesthesia induces a state of unconsciousness, where the patient is not aware of their surroundings or the surgical procedure. This is achieved by altering neurotransmitter activity in the brain, particularly enhancing the effects of GABA, which inhibits brain activity. 2. Amnesia Anesthetics often induce a state of amnesia, where the patient does not remember the events that occurred during surgery. This effect is due to the impact on memory-forming processes in the brain. 3. Depression of reflexes Anesthesia suppresses reflexes, such as the cough and gag reflexes, which can be beneficial during surgery. 4. Muscle relaxation Anesthetics cause muscle relaxation by interfering with neuromuscular transmission, ensuring that the patient remains immobile during the procedure. In summary, general anesthesia is a complex process that involves the modulation of neurotransmitters and receptors in the central nervous system to induce unconsciousness, pain control, and muscle relaxation, allowing patients to undergo surgery safely and comfortably. The exact mechanisms are still under investigation but anesthetics primarily enhance inhibitory neurotransmitter activity in the brain while suppressing excitatory pathways. Pre-anesthesia evaluation Pre-operative assessments, including pre-general anesthesia evaluations, play a crucial role in ensuring the safety and well-being of patients undergoing surgery. These assessments are conducted before the surgery itself to gather essential information about the patient's health, medical history, and current medications. Here's why preoperative assessments are important. 1. Risk assessment. Preoperative assessments help healthcare providers evaluate the patient's overall health and identify any underlying medical conditions that could increase the risk of complications during or after surgery. This information allows the medical team to determine whether the patient is a suitable candidate for surgery and to make appropriate preparations. 2. Anesthesia planning. Anesthesia is a critical part of the surgical process. Preoperative assessments help anesthesiologists determine the most appropriate type and dosage of anesthesia for each patient based on their medical history and current health status. This ensures that the patient remains comfortable and safe during the procedure. 3. Allergy identification. It's crucial to identify any allergies the patient may have, especially to medications or substances commonly used during surgery. Allergic reactions can range from mild to life-threatening, so knowing about these allergies allows the medical team to avoid potential allergens and select safe alternatives. 4. Medication review. Patients may be taking various medications for chronic conditions. Some medications can interact with anesthesia or surgical procedures, potentially leading to complications. A thorough review of a patient's medications helps the medical team make necessary adjustments or temporary discontinuations to reduce risks. 5. Optimizing health. In some cases, preoperative assessments may reveal health issues that can be addressed before surgery to improve the patient's outcome. For instance, managing high blood pressure, controlling blood sugar levels in diabetics, or treating infections can reduce the risk of complications. 6. Informed decision-making. Preoperative assessments provide an opportunity for healthcare providers to discuss the procedure, potential risks, and alternatives with the patient. This allows patients to make informed decisions about their surgery and actively participate in their care. 7. Efficient resource allocation. Knowing the patient's health status in advance allows hospitals and surgical teams to allocate resources appropriately. This includes scheduling operating rooms, arranging for specialized equipment, and ensuring the availability of trained personnel. 8. Legal and ethical considerations. Conducting preoperative assessments is not only a medical necessity but also a legal and ethical requirement. Healthcare providers have a duty to ensure patient safety, 
and thorough preoperative assessments are a fundamental aspect of fulfilling that duty. In summary, preoperative assessments are a critical step in the surgical process. They enable healthcare providers to gather essential information, assess risks, optimize the patient's health, and ensure that the surgical procedure is carried out safely and effectively. By addressing potential complications and tailoring care to the individual patient, these assessments contribute to better surgical outcomes and patient well-being. Anesthetic Agents General anesthetic agents are drugs used to induce a state of unconsciousness and painlessness during surgery or medical procedures. These agents can be categorized into two main types, inhalational agents and intravenous agents. Inhalational anesthetic agents. 1. Desflurane, sevoflurane, and isoflurane, these are volatile liquid inhalational agents that are vaporized and inhaled by the patient. They are used to maintain anesthesia during surgery. They offer a rapid onset and offset of action and are often favored for their minimal metabolism and side effects. 2. Nitrous oxide, N2O also known as laughing gas, Nitrous oxide is a gas that is inhaled along with oxygen. It is primarily used in dental procedures and as an adjunctive agent in combination with other inhalational or intravenous anesthetics. Intravenous anesthetic agents 1. Propofol, a commonly used intravenous anesthetic, propofol induces rapid and smooth anesthesia. It has a short duration of action and provides amnesia. It is often used for induction and maintenance of anesthesia in surgeries. 2. Etomidate. This intravenous agent is used for the induction of anesthesia. It has minimal effects on cardiovascular function but may cause adrenal suppression. 3. Thiopental. Once widely used for induction, thiopental has been largely replaced by newer agents like propofol. It has a slower onset and offset and is associated with more cardiovascular depression. 4. Ketamine. Ketamine is a dissociative anesthetic that induces a state of profound analgesia and amnesia while preserving airway reflexes. It is used for certain types of surgeries, particularly in emergency and pediatric settings. 5. Benzodiazepines. Drugs like midazolam are often used for sedation before surgery or as part of balanced anesthesia. They provide anxiolysis and amnesia. The choice between inhalational and intravenous agents depends on the specific surgical procedure, patient's medical condition, and the preferences of the anesthesia provider. Often, a combination of both types of agents, known as balanced anesthesia, is used to achieve the desired anesthetic effect while minimizing side effects and maintaining patient safety. Administering general anesthesia Administering general anesthesia is a complex medical procedure that involves the use of various drugs and techniques to induce a reversible loss of consciousness and sensation, ensuring the patient remains pain-free and immobile during surgery or other medical procedures. Here is an overview of the process of inducing anesthesia and the use of intravenous drugs and inhaled gases. 1. Preoperative Assessment Before administering anesthesia, the anesthesia team conducts a thorough preoperative assessment of the patient's medical history, physical condition, and any allergies or sensitivities to anesthesia medications. 2. Preparing the patient the patient is usually asked to fast for a certain period before surgery to minimize the risk of aspiration, inhaling stomach contents, during anesthesia induction. 3. Intravenous access. An intravenous four, line is established to deliver medications and fluids directly into the patient's bloodstream. This provides a quick and reliable route for drug administration. 4. Monitoring. The patient is connected to various monitoring devices, including an ECG, electrocardiogram, for heart rate and rhythm, a pulse oximeter for oxygen saturation, blood pressure cuffs, and sometimes N-tidal CO2 monitors to assess breathing. 5. Preoxygenation. The patient is given high-flow oxygen via a mask to ensure their blood is well oxygenated before the induction process begins. 6. Inducing anesthesia. There are two main approaches to inducing anesthesia, intravenous, for, drugs and inhaled gases. A. 
intravenous, for, anesthesia, for drugs are commonly used for the initial induction of anesthesia. These drugs work quickly and reliably to induce unconsciousness. Common for induction agents include, propofol, a fast-acting hypnotic agent that induces unconsciousness within seconds, etomidate, another rapid-acting for anesthetic used for induction. Thiopental, less commonly used today due to side effects, but it was historically used for induction. B. Inhaled anesthesia, once the patient is unconscious. Inhaled gases, volatile anesthetics, may be administered to maintain anesthesia throughout the surgery. These gases are usually delivered via a breathing circuit connected to the patient's airway. Common inhaled anesthetics include, isoflurane, sevoflurane, desflurane. 7. Airway Management To maintain a clear airway and facilitate ventilation, the anesthesia team may insert an endotracheal tube or use a supraglottic airway device. 8. Continual Monitoring Throughout the surgery, the anesthesia team continually monitors the patient's vital signs, depth of anesthesia, and oxygen levels to ensure the patient's safety and adjust anesthesia as needed. 9. Emergence and Recovery Toward the end of the procedure, the inhaled anesthetics are reduced or discontinued, allowing the patient to gradually regain consciousness. The patient is then transferred to the post-anesthesia care unit, PACU, for recovery and close monitoring. 10. Reversal agents, if necessary, in some cases. Reversal agents such as neostigmine and atropine may be administered to counteract the effects of certain muscle relaxants used during surgery. It's important to note that the choice of anesthesia drugs and techniques can vary based on the patient's medical condition, the type and duration of surgery, and the preferences of the anesthesia team. Anesthesia is a highly specialized field, and the process is tailored to each patient's unique needs and circumstances. Patients should discuss any concerns or questions about anesthesia with their anesthesia provider before surgery. Monitoring during anesthesia Monitoring during anesthesia is a critical aspect of ensuring patient safety during surgical procedures. Anesthesia providers continuously assess and manage various vital signs to maintain the patient's physiological stability throughout the surgery. The key vital signs monitored during anesthesia include 1. Blood pressure, BP continuous measurement of blood pressure helps assess the patient's cardiovascular status. Anesthesia can affect blood pressure, so monitoring it ensures that any deviations are promptly addressed to prevent complications like hypotension, low blood pressure, or hypertension, high blood pressure. 2. Heart rate, HR heart rate monitoring allows anesthesia providers to detect irregularities or changes in cardiac function. Abnormal heart rhythms can be indicative of issues that need immediate attention. 3. Respiratory rate, RR monitoring the patient's breathing rate is essential for identifying hypoventilation or hypoventilation, which can lead to hypoxia, low oxygen levels, or hypercapnia, elevated carbon dioxide levels. It also helps ensure the appropriate adjustment of ventilator settings if the patient is mechanically ventilated. 4. Oxygen Saturation, SpO2 Continuous measurement of oxygen saturation using pulse oximetry helps ensure that the patient is receiving adequate oxygenation. A decrease in SpO2 can signal respiratory distress or airway obstruction, prompting interventions to improve oxygen delivery. 5. N-tidal carbon dioxide, ETCO2 monitoring ETCO2 levels helps assess the effectiveness of ventilation and the patient's respiratory status. A sudden increase in ETCO2 can indicate airway issues or hypoventilation, while a drop may suggest problems with ventilation. 6. Temperature, maintaining normothermia is crucial to prevent complications such as hypothermia during anesthesia. Monitoring the patient's temperature helps prevent heat loss during surgery and ensures the patient remains within a safe temperature range. 7. Electrocardiography, ECG or EKG Continuous ECG monitoring tracks the electrical activity of the heart, helping detect arrhythmias or ischemic events. Any abnormal ECG patterns can lead to prompt interventions. 8. Capnography 
capnography measures the concentration of carbon dioxide, CO2, in the exhaled breath. It provides valuable information about ventilation and can alert providers to potential airway problems or equipment malfunctions. 9. Neuromuscular function. In some cases, monitoring neuromuscular function through techniques like train of 4 TOF, monitoring can be important, especially when muscle relaxants are used during surgery. It helps ensure the patient's ability to regain muscle strength postoperatively. 10. Depth of anesthesia. Monitoring the depth of anesthesia is increasingly important, as it helps prevent awareness under anesthesia. Various tools, such as bispectral index, BS, monitors, are used to assess the patient's level of consciousness. Patient safety is paramount during anesthesia, and continuous monitoring of these vital signs ensures that any deviations from normal can be quickly identified and addressed. Anesthesia providers are trained to respond to changes promptly, administering medications or adjusting equipment as needed to maintain the patient's stability. Close communication with the surgical team and adherence to established protocols further enhance patient safety during anesthesia. Maintaining anesthesia. Maintaining general anesthesia during a medical procedure involves a carefully orchestrated process to ensure the patient remains unconscious, pain-free, and stable throughout the surgery or intervention. Anesthesia is typically administered by an anesthesia team, which includes an anesthesiologist or nurse anesthetist. Here's an overview of how anesthesia is maintained and the adjustments made during the procedure. 1. Induction. Anesthesia induction is the initial process where the patient is transitioned from consciousness to unconsciousness. This is typically done through the intravenous administration of anesthetic drugs, inhaled gases, or a combination of both. The anesthesia team monitors the patient's vital signs, including heart rate, blood pressure, oxygen saturation, and end tidal carbon dioxide levels, to ensure a smooth transition into anesthesia. 2. Maintenance. Once the patient is unconscious, the anesthesia team continues to administer a precise combination of anesthetic agents to maintain the desired level of anesthesia. The depth of anesthesia is closely monitored throughout the procedure. Monitoring techniques may include electroencephalography, EEG, to assess the patient's brain activity, bispectral index, BS, monitoring to measure the depth of anesthesia, monitoring of inspired and expired concentrations of inhaled anesthetics, frequent assessment of vital signs to ensure hemodynamic stability, neuromuscular monitoring to assess the level of muscle relaxation, if needed. 3. Adjustments. The anesthesia team makes continuous adjustments based on the patient's response and the surgical requirements. These adjustments can include titration of anesthetic agents, adjusting the concentration of inhaled gases or the rate of intravenous drug administration to maintain the appropriate depth of anesthesia, analgesia management, administering pain relief medications as needed to ensure the patient remains pain-free during the procedure, fluid and hemodynamic management, monitoring and maintaining appropriate fluid levels and blood pressure to ensure organ perfusion, ventilation control, adjusting the ventilator settings to maintain proper oxygenation and carbon dioxide elimination, management of adverse events, promptly addressing any complications or adverse reactions, such as allergic reactions, bradycardia, or hypotension. 4. Monitoring. Continuous monitoring of the patient's vital signs, end tidal carbon dioxide levels, and oxygen saturation is essential to detect any changes or complications promptly. Advanced monitoring techniques, such as transesophageal echocardiography, TEE, or arterial pressure monitoring, may be employed for certain high-risk surgeries. 5. Communication. Effective communication between the anesthesia team, surgeon, and other operating room staff is crucial to ensure the patient's safety and optimize the surgical conditions. The anesthesia team communicates any changes or concerns to the surgical team, and vice versa, to ensure coordinated care. Throughout the procedure, the anesthesia team's primary goal is to maintain a stable and comfortable state of general anesthesia for the patient, 
while also adapting to any unexpected challenges or developments that may arise during the surgery. Their expertise, monitoring equipment, and the ability to make real-time adjustments are essential for ensuring the patient's safety and well-being during the surgical procedure. Possible Complications General anesthesia is a medical procedure that involves inducing a reversible state of unconsciousness to allow for surgical procedures or other medical interventions. While it is generally safe and well-tolerated, there are potential risks and complications associated with its use. It's important to note that the majority of patients do not experience these complications, and the benefits of general anesthesia often far outweigh the risks. Below, I'll discuss potential risks and complications, including rare ones. 1. Allergic reaction. Although rare, some individuals may have allergic reactions to anesthesia medications, which can cause symptoms like itching, rash, difficulty breathing, or even anaphylaxis. 2. Cardiovascular complications. General anesthesia can affect the cardiovascular system, leading to high or low blood pressure, irregular heart rhythms, or heart attacks. These complications are more common in patients with pre-existing heart conditions. 3. Respiratory issues. Anesthesia can suppress the respiratory drive, leading to difficulties in breathing. This can result in temporary lung problems, pneumonia, or even respiratory failure, especially in patients with compromised lung function. 4. Aspiration. There is a risk of stomach contents entering the lungs, known as aspiration, which can cause pneumonia or lung injury. Patients are typically asked to fast before surgery to reduce this risk. 5. Nausea and vomiting. Postoperative nausea and vomiting, POV, are common side effects of anesthesia. While not usually serious, they can be uncomfortable and may require treatment. 6. Mental confusion. Some patients may experience postoperative delirium, which can include confusion, disorientation, and memory problems. This is more common in older individuals. 7. Anesthesia awareness. Extremely rare but highly publicized, anesthesia awareness occurs when a patient regains consciousness or becomes partially aware during surgery. This can lead to distressing sensations or memories. 8. Nerve damage. Prolonged positioning during surgery can sometimes result in nerve compression or damage, causing numbness, weakness, or pain in specific body areas. 9. Malignant hyperthermia. A rare genetic condition can trigger a severe reaction to certain anesthesia drugs, causing a rapid increase in body temperature, muscle rigidity, and metabolic imbalances. Immediate treatment is necessary to address this life-threatening condition. 10. Infection. While anesthesia itself doesn't cause infections, surgical procedures conducted under anesthesia can carry a risk of surgical site infections, bloodstream infections, or respiratory infections. 11. Stroke or brain injury. Although very rare, there is a risk of stroke or brain injury during surgery, particularly in patients with underlying vascular conditions. 12. Postoperative pain. Some patients may experience prolonged or intense postoperative pain that requires additional treatment and management. It's essential to discuss your medical history and any concerns with your healthcare team before undergoing general anesthesia. They will evaluate your individual risk factors and take appropriate precautions to minimize the likelihood of complications. Anesthesia providers are highly trained to monitor patients closely during surgery and respond swiftly to any complications that may arise, ensuring patient safety. Awakening from anesthesia Awakening from anesthesia include Reduction of anesthetic agents As the surgical procedure nears its completion, the anesthesiologist starts reducing the administration of anesthetic agents, such as inhalation agents or intravenous drugs. This gradual reduction allows for a smoother transition. Monitoring vital signs. During this phase, the patient's vital signs, including heart rate, blood pressure, oxygen saturation, and respiratory rate, are closely monitored. Anesthesiologists use advanced monitoring equipment to ensure the patient remains stable throughout the process. Protection of airways. The patient's airway is maintained by carefully removing the endotracheal tube, breathing tube, 
or by allowing them to regain spontaneous breathing if they were on a ventilator. The anesthesiologist ensures that the patient can breathe effectively on their own. Pain management, depending on the surgery and the patient's condition, pain management medications may be administered to minimize discomfort during the transition from anesthesia to wakefulness. Controlled environment, patients are awakened in a controlled environment, typically in the operating room or a post-anesthesia care unit, PACU, where they can be closely monitored as they regain consciousness. Post-anesthesia care. Monitoring and safety, post-anesthesia care is crucial for monitoring the patient's vital signs, oxygen levels, and overall well-being as they wake up. This period allows healthcare providers to detect and manage any immediate complications or side effects of anesthesia. Pain management, patients may experience varying levels of pain or discomfort after surgery. Post-anesthesia care includes ongoing pain management to ensure that patients are as comfortable as possible. Recovery assessment, assessing the patient's recovery from anesthesia helps determine when they are ready to be discharged from the PACU or transferred to a regular hospital room. This assessment involves evaluating the patient's consciousness, ability to breathe, pain levels, and other factors. Prevention of complications, Post-anesthesia care also involves measures to prevent complications, such as monitoring for signs of nausea, vomiting, and respiratory distress, and taking steps to address these issues promptly. Patient education, patients and their families are often provided with information about the surgical procedure, post-operative care instructions, and what to expect during the recovery period. This education is essential for a smooth transition to the post-anesthesia phase.